Increasingly, middle-income economies are becoming important emitters as well. Mexico, for example, is already the 12th largest CO2 emitter in the world. The possible trade-offs between economic development and climate uh, mitigation are an important issue for many emerging economies. We need to think very carefully about uh, the political economy of this transition to cleaner and more efficient sources of energy. And we need to think about how we engage with those stakeholders of the future, those economic forces and political forces that will take these reforms forward. The Indonesian government stresses the need to promote first economic development and lift people out of poverty before addressing climate protection. Let's think broadly about going beyond zero-sum trade-offs in terms of mitigating carbon and reducing poverty and think about how we can grow our wealth together based on using our natural capital more efficiently, more justly and more productively. To contribute to climate protection, developing countries need to transform their energy systems. In order to achieve that, fossil fuel taxation, that is carbon taxes, or at least the abolishment of fossil fuel subsidies is a possible and important policy instrument. In addition to that, the introduction of renewable energy sources will be key. Implementing pricing mechanisms like carbon taxes will always leave social welfare implications. There is no shortcut to doing mitigation because it will have impact. In a country with an energy system that relies heavily on fossil fuels, as for example South Africa, the introduction of carbon taxes will lead to significant increases in the prices of electricity, but also of energy intensive goods. But policymakers will have to think through how to actually use social transfer mechanisms at the global, local and regional scales to cushion those impacts in the short term. The problem of potentially large welfare losses because of higher energy prices can be tackled by the introduction of adequate compensation programs that target in particular the poor parts of the population that are affected by energy price rises. The abolishment of fossil fuel subsidies is typically considered a win-win situation for climate protection and uh, development. Um, and Indonesia has used the window of opportunity of low oil prices to actually abolish the subsidies. Yet, it remains to be seen what happens once oil prices rise again. But the Indonesian government today has a system in place of social transfers that may in principle be used to compensate potential users of such a few future oil price rise. And the study showed that there are really important price incentives and fiscal policies that can be put in place, but they're not painless. Uh, they need to be thought out carefully, and learning from the experience of these four countries has been hugely important. Our research shows that it's not so easy to identify policies with high mitigation effects but low welfare losses. Neither in developing countries nor in more advanced economies like the European ones. The transition to uh, a zero carbon economy can be achieved with positive consequence for society as a whole. And in particular, it can offer even broader access to energy to the less well off uh, uh, through more distributed networks uh, and, uh, and systems. Generally speaking, our results indicate that the trade-offs are manageable, in particular with targeted redistribution and through thoughtful revenue recycling.